All right, hello and welcome to another episode of the vlog. It's Me not first. just another episode because we have a new setup, as you can see from Grammy's face. Yes, <laughs> it's very I have excited. my camera, she has a camera, and we have a camera. Yes. I'm very excited. Good. Okay, uh, so as you can see from the title, Elaine is going to be talking about the advantages <laughs> of living in Ghana. As a Dutch person. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but context so, first. The context is... Somebody in a C-section. <laughs> no, Comment please, it. don't let this thing become a thing. It, it's already a thing. I'm going to make t-shirt with... C-section. See you in a C-section. No, no. <laughs> oh. uh, somebody in this comment uh -huh. commented uh, whether I can talk about the advantages of living in Ghana as a Dutch person. Yeah. Okay, cool. Duly noted. Um... I can talk about that. However, uh, I cannot speak for all Dutch people. So it's weird too for me to say, like, I'm going to speak as a Dutch person on why Dutch people should live in Ghana. I You're can share talk my about experience. Your experience. Yes. Yeah, that's, yes. that makes sense. And I, of course, I can compare Netherlands and Ghana, but like, I'm not representing the whole country, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, why? Okay, for me, hmm, it's not like I was always destined to end up in Ghana. So how it happens? You think so? Yes, maybe I was destined for it, but it evolved over time. So I came here first for my master's research yeah. um, to do uh, for my thesis. So yeah. I worked at a radio station where this man also worked. That's how we met. And that was a really great start because I lived on campus at Lego on campus which was really nice because then you meet a lot of people of your own age. Yeah. So I could really get to know, okay, what is like, what are young people doing <laughs> in Accra? Um, also a lot of international people. So it was a cool mix. And then the work at the radio station was also very nice because every day I would learn so much because the news would break. I would literally be in the newsroom all day. The news would break. We would discuss it. If there was anything I wouldn't understand because yeah, I'm a foreigner. Um, I could just ask because journalists really like to talk and they really like to answer questions and they really like to discuss. So, so it was always very lively and it was very dynamic. So the beginning dynamic. of your journey was immediately you found community. Yes. Both on campus where you lived and where you worked yes. in the city. Okay. Yes. And I think also the, the fact that I started in the newsroom gave me a lot of like background into yeah. why things are the way they are in Ghana, what are current issues... Like, why are things ch not changing or are changing? And it was just a great, like, introduction. Yeah. Very immediately into the deep. When, if you come to, as a tourist, then you only see the nice places. You probably meet a few Ghanaians, but you don't have, like, in-depth conversations because it's just brief moments. But now I was actually working somewhere. I was actually living on campus. So yeah, I actually had the time to dive in Deeper. deep. Yeah. Not to say I un understood everything, but at least it was a good introduction. So that really helped. Mm, I found community really quickly, yes. Uh, what I also like is, compared to Netherlands, in Netherlands we like to plan things, you have to get ahead. So this like, is point two. Point two. Planning versus... Spontaneity. Yes. Yeah, in Ghana you can... You don't plan too far ahead, which gives you this flexibility. It makes you way more flexible because you're more like, hmm, you wake up on Saturday and you're like, hmm, what do I feel like today? Do I feel like going out? Do I feel like watching a movie? Do I feel like, I don't know. You can just be more in the moment while in Netherlands you plan maybe one week ahead or two weeks ahead, or maybe some people even plan a month ahead. And for me, it kind of goes against my nature because I want to like really, really excited about what I'm going to do. Yeah. And if you plan that far ahead, how do you know that in on June 22nd, <laughs> you want to go for dinner with this and this and this friend? For me, it doesn't really work worked that well. I think in Nellis, I also didn't plan that far ahead. Um, so you were a Dutch person who was, uh, had, had a broken calendar. Well, after I went, after the first time in Ghana, I definitely went more into like being in the moment and what do I want to do right now? Instead of like all this very much Plan planning ahead, yeah. in your head, like how will the day go? Da, da, da. It's, it's also makes you a bit stuck because you're not flexible and like, okay, you know, like at 11, I'll do this at 12, I'll do this. It just makes you 
if it's but stuck in one, your ways. One, one thing I admire is the commitment when people plan. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, that's true. Yeah, I mean, what I've seen, at least, when they do show up, even though they planned like three months ago, they are very much... Or they were very much looking forward to it, and they are in the moment. They are very present. They are very like you know, this is yeah, something yeah, I have yeah. to do. Yeah, there, there, I think there is more commitment uh, yeah. in meeting people because because in Ghana things are spontaneous. It's also like, oh, can you hang out tomorrow? Like, yeah. And then the, on that day, it's like, oh, sorry, something else came up, and yeah. then it's like, oh. <laughs> so that's true. That's another side to commitment. But yeah. I do like that I'm more in the moment, more in tune with what I feel like doing. I still plan things but it's a bit more low key. And um, so when I came back to Ghana, I moved for a job. Um, so that makes, get, that gives your job a bit more wa- weight. Yeah. Because if you moved countries for like your work, it better be good. Yeah. <laughs> because otherwise, if you're being miserable in another country, like that, that's a whole other ball game than when you just have a job you don't like in your own country, you're comfortable in your, in your life. So what I really like about Ghana is that um, in the workplace, it's relationship oriented. So it, there's always time for, and how are you, like how's the family, how are you really doing? I think that's, that's, that there's like focus on the person instead of the task makes it easier for me to settle in and to see the added value of working here. So because this is the, the people third I meet, reason. yeah. So the relationship-oriented approach to life is really nice. Yeah. Um, the, you network very quickly in Ghana. People are quickly like, "Oh, we should do something," or "Let's go do lunch." Especially in the workplace, I have. I actually, of all the places I worked, I always left with one or two friends because you bring yourself into the work. Well, I feel in the Netherlands for the time that I worked there, it's More very task. task oriented. Yeah, it, We're it, like colleagues. It's We're uncommon, colleagues. It's uncommon for colleagues to be friends, friends. Yeah. Than it is in Ghana that colleagues can yeah. least, uh, see each other after work or yeah. do more than just. Um, yeah. And especially if you are a foreigner and you you moved like your whole life to be in a place it's it's nice it's gonna feel like okay i'm actually adding value in my work but also in the workplace um so that also helps to make you feel at home and in general i believe that it's good for anybody to live outside of your own country because the fact that you learn about you will learn a lot about yourself yeah about the ways you have grown up with yeah. because in Netherlands, everybody is kind of in a Dutch setting. So yeah. you do things a certain way. It's just how things are. But once you step out of your own country, you suddenly realize, oh, why are like, like, oh, they're doing it different here. Why am I actually doing it the way I was doing it? Yeah. Does that actually like, is that the right way? Or is, that, I can... is that for me? Yeah. Or can I shift it maybe to like a mix of how they do it in Ghana, how they do it in Netherlands, or do I like the Ghanaian way more? Um, so it, it forces you to really grow and also um, step out of your comfort zone because nothing you know is, is common for you. So you, you have to learn. I think it's very humbling. Mm, and also the fact that suddenly you are the other and in Ghana, they call you Obruni. <laughs> um, that's also very humbling experience because it's... <clears throat> so if you like your comfort, if, then you, don't, like your, if yeah. you like your comfort, if you like your routine, if you like your um, realities as they are, then... But then even if you like all that, I think you should still live abroad or live somewhere else, even if it's just a different city. Really? Because it exposes you to okay, how do I do things? What do I like? What do I don't like? It kind of reinforces you to question all these things that you normally wouldn't question. Okay. So it gives you a better sense of self. Okay. Because suddenly you're in a different context and you're like, hmm, how does this actually work for me? Yeah. Instead of what am I used to? Yeah. So you really have to step out of your... Comfort what you're zone, used to. yeah. Yeah, and I always say if friends come to visit, to visit Ghana or visit us here... 
I say you come to Ghana for the people. You don't honestly. I I think you don't come to Ghana for the safari like the Mole National Park or the elephants or these things. You come for the people. When you go from A to B, that is where the adventure is in Ghana. Yeah. Like, who will you meet? How will the journey go? Even if everything something... is so, um, uh, it's almost uncertain. Like. It's it's very uncertain. Yeah, and unpredictable, not in a bad way. In, in yeah, a, but yeah. that's the interesting thing about Ghana. You don't know how you're going to get from A to B. Let's say you're going to travel to Aquasombo. Let's say you want to go by Chotro. You don't know who you meet in the Chotro, but you might end up with like a really nice conversation yeah. or you might end up with somebody who you like, later on you're like, oh, I'm go like you exchange numbers and later on you meet in a cry and it's a friend. Yeah. It, can, it can happen like that. And yeah. even if things go wrong, like I've had ones that I was here with my, my mom and my sister were visiting. We're at Cape Coast, just outside of Cape Coast. We were on our way back to Accra. The car broke down. In Netherlands, ah, you go call... <laughs> The, I don't know, the service line. Yeah, then the other bus will just come and Maybe pick you Maybe like two, two hours later, they'll come and pick you. But you will definitely not move with that car quickly. Heh, we found a mechanic. You fixed it. My mom was sitting in a chair. Everybody was trying, like uh, everybody in the shop was trying to accommodate my mom because she was like senior, senior. So she had to sit and get water and all these things. People make sure you are, you are comfortable. It, there, it, Ghanaians are very warm in that sense, very yeah. polite. If they see you looking around, at least if you look foreign like me, and they see you looking around, they will come to you and say, are you okay? Like, do you know where you're going? Are you, you lost? Help? Yeah. Especially when I was in Kumasi, people would always come to me, like, because I would go look for things and I couldn't find them. And then they're like, where, where are you actually going to? So it's a good thing. Yeah. It really, it's, it's the, wa it's the warmth of yeah. it is really nice. Um, yeah. And I'm not sure if Ghanaians value that as much themselves, but because I look from the outside in, I appreciate that. I think um, as a Ghanaian, there, it happens for Ghanaians as well. However, um, most Ghanaians would um, attest to the fact that when you are lost at a place in Ghana, it's more the demeanor and how you relate to the people who could help you that will get you helped as opposed to when you're a foreigner and they know you're a foreigner, they come towards you. But, as, but a, even as a Ghanaian, when you're lost in a place and you came to pass three times and they didn't greet anybody. Yeah, okay. Then, <laughs> then no, but even, just, so, so you're not going to get help. But it's just funny how quickly, like even in the most remote places, you will get help. Yeah, it's, 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 like, it's, a, it's a weird thing. Like, yeah, I've never actually yeah. really thought about it, but for your car to break down remember when in a we place went where to, you think it's like nowhere. Remember when we went to meet me there and there and the car overheated and we went to the side. It was just before <laughs> um, Kita. Yeah, the, and, uh, the, the, the first car, yeah. And out of nowhere, a mechanic popped up. Yeah. Like we, we asked, there was a house there and then I think he went there to I ask. I asked, yeah, and, and what are the chances that the house, that the cargo spot in front of, we asked whoever was there and, oh, I know someone or I am a mechanic myself. Yeah. Like, what? Okay. But even this week, so I, I took a boat to work. Then I sit in the boat, we start to drive, then the car stops working. I'm like, oh, sorry. He's like, okay, I have to get this fixed. Kindly. I'm like, okay, kindly cancel. It's fine. Do you need any help? He says, no, I'll be fine. So I was like, okay. Then I went into the house to wait for the next car. Then I come out of the thing. And there's a mechanic under that vault. Yeah. And it was like 6.20. In the morning, yeah. In the morning. Within the eight minutes that I ordered a new car, there was and, a mechanic at, under at the car. And this was not the neighborhood. In the Netherlands, if it's not a 247 service, which you're going to probably pay double for, yeah, you probably have to get a train and leave your car there. Yeah, so that kind of, I know that that sense of community that also has its disadvantages because people also look at other people like, what are you doing? Da, da, da. So there's a bit of, like, there's that as well. But for me, it's it's wonderful that people are looking like keeping an eye on each other. Yeah. And if you need help, whether it's with your car or whether you are lost or you need to use somebody's phone because your phone is dead, it, it will happen. Like, in, you don't know how you're going to get there, but it will work itself, itself out because people are so warm. Yeah. I think that's really nice. Um, 
yeah so that's one of the things as well is that's there any other that you want to share or that's about <laughs> it for now um, okay I'll ask you um, what this will be the final so that we can just wrap it up what kind of Dutch person do you think um, should explore living in Ghana I mean wherever you're gonna live be open-minded okay so be like willing to learn about yourself and also about Ghana um, there I mean there's not of course not one truth about Ghana or living in Ghana but for me I really enjoyed like talking to so many different people yeah <laughs> from the taxi driver to people at work and and be curious I think it's very important be curious without assuming that you know the answer because the longer I'm you are put it on in the a screen I'm gonna put on the screen this one I'm gonna put on the screen be curious without assuming that you know the answer yes she likes me to put stuff on the screen <laughs> <laughs> but also um uh, now I lost my train of thought <laughs> I had a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it's gone. Oh. It was really good. Oh. So, okay, yeah. So be curious, open minded. I think that's the most important thing. Anywhere where you live. It's not about Ghana. I apologize. Yes. The, for the if most I... <laughs> very important point that's lost. <laughs> um. What kind of people? Yeah, open-minded is the most important thing. And try to really reflect. Because even though you think, oh, I'm coming here to do X, Y, Z. Because you're one, you're a foreigner. Yeah. Two, uh, you bring, whether you're white, black or anything, if you, you, you'll bring that along in your interactions. Yes. I'm a woman. So for me, I'm a foreigner. Your, people see me as European. I'm white. I'm a woman. Um, young, that all brings interactions. Yeah, and then the expectations and the How do you from navigate people. that? I'm more aware of my appearance now because I've lived in Ghana. I know what I bring along yeah. in every interaction I have. Yeah. And I'm aware of it. And it's good to be aware of it because then you can navigate it better. Yeah. Well, if you're always in your comfort zone, always in the Netherlands, doing what you're used to, you, you will never not get to grow. experience these things, yeah. Yeah, it's important. So I think open-mindedness is the most important thing. And yeah, people always, when I sit in the boat or the taxi, people, uh, I like to ask how long I've been here. <laughs> and I was like, since 2019, permanently. And they're like, ah, that's a long time. Are you married? <laughs> and I think it's so funny because, yes, I'm married to a guy it is a very important thing of why I'm here, but it wasn't not initially the reason yeah. to move to Ghana. Yeah. But people don't believe that. Often but, people think that you came because you found somebody here. Yes. As in you came back because you found somebody here the first time you came. Yes. As if love is the only good reason to like, love is stay not the only somewhere. Reason. No, you should it's come a great to Ghana reason. For but work and experience and Yeah, like it, it is it is more than just that part of my life that makes me want to stay here. Don't come looking for a partner. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I think... Um, I hope that answers your question, guy in the C-section. <laughs> <laughs> Please, if you have more questions for me, drop them. Okay. Or for Kwame, that's fine too. Okay, so yeah, we're going to end this one here. Um, I hope she sold Ghana enough. Um, Please you. come to Ghana. Yes. Come to Ghana. Yes. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're going to end this video here right now. And uh, Oh yeah. I didn't even talk about beautiful, how beautiful Ghana is. Like outside of the people. Yeah. I mean, locations that you do. I think see. you should put some Volta region. It's the no, sea. You, you know, no, I'm not going to do that. On the, the, you check out some of our vlogs, some of the places yes, that we've been. Yes, we have been. a lot of travel vlogs that show how some diverse of the places Ghana that we've is. Been. Yes. yes, check out some of those. I'll put them in the link. Check it out. Put them in the link. Put them in the link. <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you for watching. If you have more <laughs> questions for us, please let us know. Then we'll check the C section and we'll, <laughs> we'll oh, go from there. <laughs> Lord, I'm Thank out. Thank you. I'm out. Bye bye. <laughs>